Absolutely, but I want to ask about the offense first. Uh, the stats bear out over the stretch where you guys are eight and three over the last eleven. That the, the offense has improved. What are you seeing, uh, and specifically, what are you seeing from your stars playing well at the same time? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, you know, and I, I don't know if I necessarily did a great job, you know, clarifying just um, you know being somewhat more random, but you know, less 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 of you know, the, the, just coming down last year and trying to help Io in particular just because of the injuries to Alex and, and, and to Lonzo. And I think at times, you know, as, as great as DeMar had played, and obviously Zach was dealing with injuries last year, he just wasn't himself. You know, it, it, was, it, was, it was a, you know, we, we became very one-dimensional, you know, and I think trying to get them to come down the floor and see where guys are in particular spots and what things to run and what things to do, I think takes time. And it's not so much come down, hey, just do whatever you want to do. But, you know, DeMar's here, Vooch is over here, Zach's over here, Kobe, but you know, okay, what are things we can flow into quickly with everybody on the same page instead of it being play called? And I think that that just takes time. I think it takes time for DeMar. You know, and for Vooch and for Zach, and as great as they are as off offensively, you want them all to kind of complement each other. So, you know, maybe the word, you know, randomness wasn't the, the, the best usage of word in terms of saying it, which was randomly playing, but just more understanding. And I think that takes time where guys find, okay, I got a spot here. I can get this here. This is available for me, where it's not like every time you're yelling out something and trying to organize a play, but they're playing with some flow down the floor. And that takes time. You know, I'll be honest with you. There's, there's, been a lot of days where you know you're you're having to keep showing film and I think that they to their to their credit have has worked hard at it you know have have worked you know to un, they understand I think from a year ago that we need to be a, a lot more like that you know to play against some of these better teams where it's not so eccentric of one player and then the other part of it is you know the last three four five six minutes you're going to be play calling stuff and not to say you're not doing that in timeouts or free throws or dead balls you're doing that but i'm talking about the randomness of about 60 percent of the game is played off misses and makes how are we playing inside that structure offensively where they can flow and play and and, and play off each other and i thought you know tonight i thought zach and, and demar you know complemented each other so well and um you know even though Vooch did not have a big offensive night. I thought he generated a lot of stuff from the post in terms of kickouts and open shots for our guys. Yeah, yeah, you know, and he could have had a lot more. You know, we missed a lot of his his pass outs. And, um, but he's an unselfish player. You know, Zach and DeMar, those guys will pass the ball. But it's just everybody getting on the same page of how we need to play. And I think we have been better. Um, but I still think there's a lot more room for growth, but I just appreciate how hard they've tried to work to get better at some of those things. Zach had a big and efficient December, but to go for 41 and then tonight 36 on a back-to-back -back kind of feels like another step. Just where do you feel like he's at there, and does it feel like he's kind of got to another level now within this season? Well, I think, you know, he mentioned, you know, he knows his body better than anybody that he felt like as the last over the last several weeks he's getting his legs back under him. Um, and then I think the one thing he's doing a great job of is he's playing the game, what I would say, very easy. And what I mean by that is, you know, even my first year here where he was such a, a sole creator for our team, there was so much on his plate that he exerted a lot, a lot of energy. And I think he's playing, at least these last two games, really efficiently. You see him, it's one or two, one or two dribbles, pull up three you know, one, two dribbles straight downhill. And he's just, I think, reading the game really well. And as great of a, of a three-point shooter as he is, the more threes he gets up, because he's so great and so elite, the more it opens up to another area that he's elite at, and that's driving the ball to the basket. So uh, I, I was very encouraged that he took 13 threes against Philly. And, you know, he took you know, um, a good number tonight again. And, and as long as he's doing that, you always feel good with his shooting percentage when he rises up and shoots it. And that's not to say that Zach is just a, a three-point shooter or a catch and three-point shooter, but we're a team that doesn't generate a lot of threes. And for us to generate more threes, he can be a big part of that. And then he's got to find the balance between shooting those threes and then obviously getting downhill and either getting to the basket or, you know, or passing and, and creating offense for others.
you know, really just like we've talked about you guys three point shooting all year. I'm so, sorry. You guys, we talked about three point shooting and sort of the, the number of threes y'all take. Do you think that that can be a solution? Does that can take even more threes than this thing is seven seven or so attempt that he's been taking this year? Um, how many you get up tonight? I didn't even see. He's got to me ten to fifteen every night. I, I would love that. But I also understand, too, that when he's out there playing, he's got to read the game. Because if somebody's all the way up over him, you don't want him to sit there and say, well, i got to take 15 three-point shots, so I'm just going to take one dribble and take a bad shot. He doesn't play like that. But I think him inside the offense recognizing those opportunities to do that, you know, so, you know, the, 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 last, the last two games, you know, he's got up 25 three-point shots. You've seen our numbers, even like um, the Philly game, we took 34. You know, and um, you know, and tonight it was 25. Or whatever. But we, he's such a great shooter, and it opens up a lot of things. But you know, it's hard when you're a player like Zach who wants to play the right way and who's got the team in his mind of incorporating people. Like he's not one of these guys just wants to come down and jack up shots. That's not who he is. He's never been. He wants to everybody to kind of get into a rhythm and flow, and he's very unselfish that way. But I think he's figuring out, okay. If I do take some of these threes and I knock them down, it's pulling people up on me, and I can really, really get downhill and create, create for myself and for others. And that's why he's an elite player because he can play on all different levels. So sort of, I don't want to say like change your game plan, but just like coming to a point where it seems like everybody's kind of understanding the way that he bends defenses by coming off those screens. I'm, I'm sorry, you first part. I'm just asking like the way that he bends defenses coming off those screens, does that encourage you guys to do more of that within the flow of the offense? Yeah, I mean, you know, when he's coming off pick and roll like tonight, it was great because they were switching a lot, you know, so he was able to stop behind screens and take some of those threes. The same thing happened in Philly where he's coming off a screening action and they're switching and they're so worried about his speed coming downhill that they're waiting for him below the three-point line. And when he recognizes those and rises up and shoots him, what happens is after a couple times he makes those, it's just straight line downhill. So, yeah, the more opportunities he has to do that, the better. And I think us randomly playing like that where it's not so much play called, but we can recognize it inside of the flow of misses and made baskets. When you talk about Zach playing more easy like he was tonight and last night, what do you think the difference is beside just the injury? I mean, especially in terms of his efficiency, what do you think is coming more easy? Well, like, listen, I, 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 you know, I appreciate all these guys where you, you try to evaluate the previous year and you try to say, okay, you know, outside of, you know, Gorn and, and Andre, pretty much the team's the same. You, you try to figure out, okay, how, do, how can we get better? What are the things that we can improve upon and how do we need to improve? And when you talk in the summer and you spend time and you communicate on this stuff, you know, it's not something just happens overnight. It takes time to evolve. And I still think we can get better. I don't feel like we're, we're there. I think we have too many lapses, but I think that the guys are really trying. And I appreciate them buying into that because they understand that how we were last year. And at that moment in time, I think it was the best decision for our team. But going forward, I think they know what that's going to look like. And I think some of the reasons why we've been able to maybe compete better against, you know, some of the better teams is I, I think that there is a little bit more, quote unquote, I don't want to say randomness, but we're not, we're, we're flowing out of, you know, coming down the floor. And that takes time. And I think for Zach, not having a, a normal training camp, missing the first two games, trying to get his own legs under him, coming into an offense that's somewhat different than it was a year ago, that, it just takes time. And, and I give him a lot of credit for just being having the resolve and the fortitude to keep to, to keep going and trying to get better because I don't think he was very pleased about where he was at early in the year, you know. And it wasn't his fault. He tried to do everything he possibly could to get himself ready to play, but he also wanted to get himself and his his knee and his legs strong enough, you know. But he missed a lot of five on five. He missed a lot of that, and he got a lot of that in training camp. And as time in the season's gone on, I think. Some of that's come back to him. Kobe and um, Pat were a little bit ineffective offensively up until that fourth quarter, two-minute stretch where they put up 11 points. How impressed were you by their ability to stay in this game and then spark that that fourth quarter? Yeah, game? I mean, I think the same thing could be said for Kobe in the Philly game. You know, he didn't he missed two free throws in the first half, and then he made some big threes late. The thing I love about Kobe is, you know, when something negative happens or you know something happens where he knows he can be better. He always responds. And I just appreciate 
you know, maybe him not having or getting off to a great offensive start, but him sticking with it. And the same thing with Patrick. You know, Patrick had a hard night. I think he was two for ten I mean, from tonight from the field. But you know what? Like, he made two big three-point shots. And that's what you got to do is you got to keep your head in the game. You know, you can't. And I think Patrick's discussed that and talked about that, that that's been one of his challenges and areas of growth is he can let previous situations dictate his energy and where he's at mentally and I just got a lot of respect for the fact that he's recognized that and then two stepping up and making some of those shots because we got down by seven called timeout we kind of went back on a run and got back control of the game a little bit thanks coach okay thank you